Welcome to your first day of the challenge. So this is day one of the Prevent a Code Challenge. So I'm Anne. I'm your nurse and your transformational coach here. So today we are going to add to your Reveal Yes toolbox, right? We're going to be doing this all uh, week uh, for the next four days. So uh, post in the comments below where you're coming from, maybe what kind of nursing uh, you're doing. Um, I am live today, um, and I will be live every day for the next three days at 10.15 uh, for days two, three, and four. Uh, that does mean that Saturday we will not have a strategy Saturday. We will be doing our challenge instead at 10.15. So it's important, right, for us to add to our toolboxes to get that resilience, to build up that plan for when life gets a little stressful, right? And we're moving toward that burnout uh, phase. So we get our toolbox, we can reach in for one of these tools and it will help us get through that and get some resilience. So first, let's kind of talk about resilience. So what is resilience? So simplest terms, it's uh, that ability to bounce back. Uh, to be a resilient person means we're able to kind of withstand all that hardship, adapt, including some trauma. So I have said in the past, I think nursing um, unfortunately, and, and, and healthcare in general has kind of led to us as the staff, as the nurses and those healthcare professionals having some PTSD um, issues. Uh, definitely, we are in that culture right now where it's go, go, go. We're working on staff. We're dealing with a lot of extra pressures from the outside world and the culture of healthcare itself. And we don't ever really have that time to take time for ourselves and to grieve if we lose a patient or to move on. That 30 seconds, uh, you're in one room and you literally have 30 seconds to kind of get your face back on, get your professional self together and move on to the next patient. Um, you know, what happens in that room if you've had a code, if you've lost somebody, um, if you've gotten yelled at, and that's a lot of stress uh, that we endure. Uh, so we need this resilience toolbox. So when we're having those moments, we're having those issues, during our days, we have something to fall back on, right? So today is my number one stress tip, the thing that has helped me the most. I do a lot with overwhelm, a lot of anxiety, a lot of my mind in that go, go, go nurse mode. It's hard for me to sometimes turn that off. So the number one tip is to focus on what's right in front of you. Very hard sometimes in nursing and healthcare, we have been taught kind of one of our great nursing skills. We are multitaskers. Larson recently read um, an article and found some research kind of on this where they've done the studies. And when we switch between tasks, we actually lose 20% productivity. So no wonder when we're going between our five to six patients without really getting the one task done, we feel like we're not getting anywhere, right? Trying to pass meds on one person and get interrupted and get interrupted and get interrupted. So yeah, we're going around just trying to keep our heads above water. That is a legit thing. So think about that. If you're trying to multitask between six and you lose 20%, nowhere in there is there 100%. So we need to focus on what's right in front of us. And doing that, we need to ask ourselves, what's important to me right now? Right now, we're focusing on just today, what we're doing right now, and not worrying about all those other things that need to get done, that feeling of kind of overwhelm, oh, I don't really have the time for all this. This does go into all aspects of our life, right? Not just nursing, not just work, our family life, our home life, whatever needs to get done, what's right in front of me. So what's important to me right now, we always have to ask ourselves. So right now it's adding to our resilience toolbox, right? So we have something to fall back on, to bounce back when those times come up or feeling that stress and that overwhelm. So this stress management tip, as I said, has been very, very helpful as the recovering perfectionist and always wanting to have my ducks in a nice little row, knowing exactly where I'm going, how it's going to pan out. And we know life, <laughs> life isn't that way. I laugh at myself because, yeah, I can have the greatest plan ever, but life happens and things happen and, you know, that's just the way it is. So with ducks, you know, on the surface, nice and calm on the surface and what's going on underneath right their feet are just a paddle and paddle and paddle and paddle and so on the surface I look nice and calm and you know collective um, and in my brain my head's doing the paddling yeah, what do I got to go to next so a uh, process in the past year of learning to not plan so far ahead to focus on what's in front, in front of me be mindful of that meditation has helped quite a bit with that taking that time to just kind of sit still and be mindful 
I use that in many areas of my life, uh, nursing, obviously, um, eating, exercising, whatever I'm doing, I just need to be mindful of it um, and focus on that as best as I can. Uh, sometimes that's harder than uh, than uh, I'd like to admit, but that, that is life. So multitasking really isn't productive. That thing has been busted out of the water, especially for me. So multitasking, telling ourselves we can keep juggling all this stuff. Uh, we want that work-life balance. We want the balance at work when we're there to not feel like we're going in a thousand different, different directions. Same thing goes at home, especially those of you that have families. That's kind of your second job, right? You go home and you kind of start all over with whatever needs to be done with the kids and the family. But try to focus on the one task, complete it, and then move on to the next task. This is all practice, right? We're learning. This is why we're challenging ourselves this week. So I've used this, and a couple of my clients have uh, used this, and it found it very beneficial. Uh, uh, one client in particular, we both have struggled with overwhelm and that anxiety, especially, as I said, those issues with perfectionism. And this has helped us to not get so far ahead, not feel all that stress and anxiety. Um, and that part of, like, where, where do I start? What do I do next? So start that day with, you know, kind of your to-do list of what needs done. Ask yourself what's most important to me. And then at the end of the day, of the day I found this very um, helpful as well, reflecting. Okay, so I was able to do today what was most important to me. Yes, there's still some stuff on the list. Yes, there's stuff I maybe didn't get to, but I did what was most important uh, for me in that day. And that kind of goes with nursing too. Nursing's 24 hours, right? We don't always like to leave things for the next shift. I'm in one of those in particular, but it's okay. Some of that stuff we just can't get to. But we did what was most important for the patient, and hopefully we're able to get in there what's most important for me as well. So that's what our challenge is today, to kind of contemplate, um, take at least five minutes, contemplate what is most important to you right now. So um, those of you that have joined uh, the challenge, you have your action guide. Go ahead and write that in there. If you would still like to join the challenge, a message below. I will put the link uh, into to join still. We still have a couple more days and you will get those extra resilience tools uh, moving forward. So as I said, take those five minutes, write down what's most important to me right now, post those below. And then the other thing is to look at your calendar. Are you doing too much? Is there too much on your plate? Is there anything that you could take off this week that maybe would make things a little easier for you and it's not as important if it gets done. So do those uh, two steps for today and then make sure you do join us again tomorrow. Tomorrow will be day two of our Prevent a Code You Challenge. So the point of this challenge is to not get to that point where we're so overwhelmed, we're so burnt out that we have to call that Code You. We like to have prevention in nursing, right? We want to prevent things from happening. So when you start to see those signs, we need to do something about it, right? So challenging ourselves to grow, to stretch, to transform, that's the whole point of, of the challenge. So we wanna to get to the point so we're not having to call the code view. If you have to, we do it, right? When we know we're at that point and we need some assistance, we have to hit that code view. Take that time for yourself, recharge, refuel, and then be able to keep going on with things. So make sure you do join me tomorrow at 10.15, live here on the Nurses Stress Rx page. Go ahead if you're on the replay, make sure you comment uh, with what, what are those things that are most important to you right now. And tomorrow we will be looking at some self-care practices. So we'll keep adding to our resilience toolbox. So everyone have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.